To create a scout to be used as a template for future opponent scouts, simply go to the scouts page, opponent scouts tab, and select a new opponent scout button. For the scouting report name, we'll just say uh, example of opponent scout or template. Hit the blank template and hit create. Now we've already referred to how to create, how to use tiles in a fast scout. If you refer to that link that's just appeared in your screen here, that will take you to that video and allow you to set that up. For now though, if we select section header, I'll just choose some colors. I'll add two image boxes. Uh, sorry, let's remove the image boxes. I'll add two text boxes, it's probably better. I'll add a spacer. Now, let's just quickly to get started. Now, I'd like to put keys to the game at the top of the page. Offense and defense, offensive keys, defensive keys. Bullet points, we'll just put A, B, and C. I try not to put too much information, just three dot points. But then I'll also put targets. I'll put again one, two, three. And that there is just purely for me to have that set up so that I can come in on my next scout and actually go in and put some information there. So offensive keys might be inside outside focus, you know, and then the targets would be 25 attempts in the paint and getting to the foul line, you know, 10 times this game. Whatever your targets are, whatever your keys are, you can enter them game by game. But in your template, you want it to be essentially generic or without any information because it's a template that we're going to use for multiple oppositions, multiple games. Spacer block, that's just there so that we can separate the next section. Now if I duplicate this here, because I like it to be consistent, we might put component information. Now component information, we can enter a custom table. We can upload a CSV file, such as this recent games here. And whilst obviously recent games are going to change, I like to have a spot set aside for recent games. So I make the table a little bit bigger than I need. I have my table set up the way I would have it in a season for an opposition template. And yes, I'll leave that information in, but that's because I'm importing a whole table. Now, the next tile I'd like to put for opponent information will be if I go to save tiles, starting five, I've got my starting five, our starting five is consistent, so I'm happy to leave that information there. The opponent is generally going to be different every game, so I'll leave that blank. Now, there's also some information here. There's some, sorry, some space here. Now, if there's any other information you'd like to put, you can do so. Now, that might be another table. So you might put, uh, say, four by four. Uh, free throw shooters. And you might put player, free throw, make free throw attempt, free throw percentage. Right. You, know, you might put make attempt total, make attempt per game, or free throw percentage, whatever you like to set up, and then you can put. 32, whatever their name is. So again, when it's an opposition scout, you might want to leave that blank. So you can just enter that in next time. And if you're as detailed as I like to be, you might duplicate this. You might have best free throw shooters, worst free throw shooters. Now, if you do that and you want to make it a bit more aligned, you might also want to put under their starting five players of note. So you might put a couple of players that come off the bench that are key players or a couple of players that start. So they might regularly start their two guards and you know center, but they might change their forwards or they might have one guard and one forward that rotate in and out of the lineup, but the other three are consistent. You know, whatever you like to put there, you can do so. Again, I'd set all this up the exact same way, but I'd obviously have my best 
well, the opposition's best and worst here, so we know who we want to foul and who we don't want to foul, like game situation. Bit of space at the bottom. Again, we can always make this space a little bit larger, maybe put another spacer between, just to give us a bit more of a setup, more of a display how we like. Now, another feature we have, if we create another page, is we can import plays from FastDraw. So as long as you've used FastDraw, you've fast shared, so it's on FastDraw web, all those plays will be available here. Now we can filter this down by team. So if we're looking for fast draw play bank, why not the best one to use? We can use Melbourne. You can tick the two plays that they're running. We can go back to all. We can still see the two plays I've ticked, and we might want to include horns because there's a video attached. Now these videos I've already added through fast draw web, so you can see that there. That's tied into this play. So if I've added these three plays, add tile to page two, add three plays, and they'll populate in here. Now by default, they set up to take a quarter of the page each. So even if there's one, two or three play or frames per row, so let's say two for that one, three for that one, and we'll leave that as two, it's still got a tile that's a quarter of the page. Generally descriptions can come down to here, depends how much information you have on your plays. But there's everything else, I can simply resize that to try and make the most of these pages. Now, again, there's a bit of room here if you know that there's one main play that you're always going to have, whether it's obviously going to be a different play each game, but you might want to set that up on another page. We can move that to page one, but you see straight away this red bar that comes around. That's because this play is taking up too much space. It can't fit the bottom section there, so the footer which means it's not going to print properly. So that red ribbon is just saying, that red border, sorry, is just saying that it's not big enough. You need to move something. So we'll move back to page two. And page two might be something consistent for you that you use to create new play, uh, to show plays of the opposition. Now Horns 54, because I've already had video attached to this from Fast Draw Web, there's a video attached to this. Now that's going to appear on the FastScout app when you export and when you share it to your players. Now, personally, I like to put a couple of players on. I like to try and make it half the width of the page, whether it's two or three is dependent on what you like to see or how many plays are in, how many frames are in the play. But I like to set aside one page for this so that every time I generate a scout of this template, I can simply go in, click those three dots, hit settings, and change it to whatever play that I'm using for that game, and then hit save, and it's going to replace that with the new play. Now that way I know I can just use this template and select whatever team we're playing against and select the most common plays that we want to show. Another option is to hit this new page button, and we can use personnel. Now personnel is probably the most common one here. To start with, add players, so let's just say Jane Smith, Lily Samson, Mary Allen, and you hit the play, uh, the plus button, sorry, which adds them in. Now I can tick the players that I want to add in. I'll leave Mary Allen out just so I can show an example shortly. You'll see the default info, you can tick or untick, and you'll see the info order where I can easily click and drag to remove them around. So if I don't want wait, I can untick that. I might want number, position, and then full name. I can simply drag that around as I see fit. Once you're happy with the setup, we're adding them to tile, adding these tiles, sorry, to page three. Or we can create a new page to do so. So here, add tile. Now, the two plays I've selected have come through. Now, this image, same as all the other images, click that, and you can upload any photo into that section there. But this photo, or image tile will be a subtile under the personnel tile. This table here is a subtile under the personnel tile, same with this text box. Now, because it's a blank scout and we're putting all this information in, we can have nothing there and we might want to put season three. You might want to put last five season. You might put last match up against ourselves last five games, you can just put that however you like. 
or you can just delete the whole row if you don't want it. So same as everything else, you can remove. So now we might just say season. And this information here, you might go points, rebound, assist, steal. Well, you can put whatever information you want or have access to. Three point percentage, free throw percentage. And I might just delete these here to get a bit more space. You can set that up however you like, and you can resize these just like you would any other column, any other table, sorry. Now, I can make this a bit smaller. And I can add in another text box by simply clicking that text box. It's going to add it below the image by default. Remove it and resize it. Now, that might be because you want to have some notes on tendencies. And then on this one, you might want to put how to defend. Put some dot points, whatever information you like to use, however you like to do that, you can set that up here. Now, again, this is going to be a blank template. So you don't want to put too much detail in, but you want to set it up so you don't have to keep doing this every time. With Jane Smith, click on the name and you'll see you can enter a number, position, Hi, hit save and that will come up. Now, Lily Sampson is still based off the original personnel setting. So there's two things we can do. We can click on the menu. Now, settings will take us back to this menu here. Tile formatting is all the same stuff that we've seen before. Adding videos is the same, moving, duplicating, saving, all the same. But we can apply this player layer and apply it to any other players that we've already got set up. So now Lily Samson, whilst the table information remains the same as it was, it has split it up to now show one table, two text boxes. So it hasn't deleted the other row. It hasn't you know, resized or deleted any of the columns, but it has set up the layout to match. Now, another way we can do this is to delete this tile. Go into here for Jane Smith, duplicate the tile. Then go in to settings and select Lily Sampson. Now we have Jane Smith and Lily Sampson with all the same information. Again, I can click Lily Sampson, number five, forward, 194 centimeters, save, and now we have two different players. Now, if I go to personnel and we add in Mary Allen now, antique weight, it's going to go back to the default setup. So again, we can apply the personnel layout, but generally speaking, because we've already made so many changes, you might find it easier to delete that, duplicate another one, and then change the player over through the settings. Once you have them all set up, we can reorder the player tiles. Some, play, some coaches like to put them in number order. So one, Mary might be number three, number five. Some like to go by surname, some like to go by first name, you know, some like to go by minutes played or most important or least important. Either way, once you click save, it'll reorder to whatever you've set that up as. So once we're happy with how this is all set up, we can go to this option here, create template, create a new template or update an existing one. So we can update existing template. So we'll update the template for apprentice scouts, and hit save. So, template for opponent scouts. Now, if we go to new opponent, save template, template for opponent scouts. So now we can say first team green, hit create, and now a new scout will appear based on everything we just created as a template. So everything we just saw, and now we can go in and we can start making changes. So we can go in and start editing, uh, adding new players because it's against a new team. We can go in and change the plays. We can go in and start updating this information, entering new information here, adding a new recent games file, then deleting this one and entering the new keys of the game. Hopefully this helps you see all the options you can do and how you can make future scouts after you've set up the way you like, make it super convenient for yourself. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to support at fastballsports.com. We'll be happy to help. Thank you.